You join me live in our compact and bijou studio here in Chamonix, France. And yep, we're filming it in the back of the adventure bus tonight. We wanted to shoot this video outside in the glorious sunshine. Unfortunately, the weather gods aren't with us. So my goal race of the year is here. And as this video goes live on the channel, we'll actually be in the bus heading for Cormier, Italy for that midnight start time. So I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to run you through all the kit that I've selected to help me through this epic mountain challenge and I'm also going to finally reveal the trail running shoe that I'm going to be using for the race although I'm sure a lot of you guys already know what it is and it's not the best kept secret in the world so without further ado let's dive into the video Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and you are watching Run For Adventure. Hope everybody is fit and well out there and you've all been enjoying the epic mountain content that we've been bringing you guys from Chamonix. It is the day before the big race and the nerves are definitely starting to gather. So to take my mind off the fact that I've got to run 140K with 9,100 meters of elevation, I thought I'd give you guys a detailed look at the kit and the nutrition that I'm gonna be using in the race. I have to say the training has gone really well since we've been out here in France and I've managed to get 31,000 feet of elevation in my legs which has definitely given me a lot more confidence and a lot more strength when it comes to taking on this adventure. Right so on with the list and I'm going to run you through all the apparel that I'm going to be wearing for the race. Anyone that's followed the channel will know I'm a massive fan of Danish running apparel brand Sky, and you'll also know that I like to wear sort of bold colourful uh, running kit when I'm out there so uh, it doesn't get a lot bolder and more colourful than this. So I'm going to be clad head to toe in their paradise floral print. So yep, I've got their combat tee in that print. I have also got their pacer shorts and it doesn't stop there because I've also got one of their reversible hats. So uh, I'm going to call this my sort of flower power outfit and you're definitely going to see me coming in the crowd, that's for sure. But I'm wearing it because, you know, when you hit them moments in the race when you're suffering and you're struggling and you're in a bit of a low, hopefully I can look down at my outfit and it's going to give me that burst of energy and put a smile on my face and hopefully put lots of smiles on other runners' faces as well as I make my way around. Socks. Um, Obviously, it's got to be a pair of uh, stance socks, massive fan of stance socks. I'm not sure which pair, I've got several. I'll obviously have to pick out a pair and a color that matches my flowery outfit because you know, that's super important on race day. Obviously, the TDS is a challenging mountain race and you know, we're gonna be out there for probably two nights and the weather conditions can change at the drop of a hat. So we've got to carry a pretty substantial mandatory kit with us at all times. So firstly, I'm gonna be using uh, the Ron Hill shape dry Gore-Tex running waterproof jacket. Brilliant jacket this, super lightweight, really breathable and it packs down nice and small so it's not going to take up a lot of volume in my race vest. It was kind of a toss up between this and Say Sky's uh, 3L Element waterproof jacket. Both great running waterproofs but I just went with the Ron Hill because it just packs down a little bit smaller. We've also got to carry waterproof trousers and a warm full legging so I'm going for a Salomon Bonatti waterproof trousers. Uh, I've got to be honest they're not the best waterproof trousers in the world but they they are very light and they pack down small. I've had them for probably over 10 years and I've probably worn them twice. So uh, it's got to be pretty bad conditions for me to put on a pair of waterproof trousers, but you never know in the mountains it could be. So I'll be carrying those on the day. Warm leggings, I'm going to be carrying a pair of full uh, X-Bionics tights. Uh, if you've ever worn any X-Bionic kit, kit before, it is brilliant and it's excellent at regulating body temperature. So again, very rare for me to be seen running in a pair of tights, but if I have to put any on in the race, if it does get bad and the weather does change, then the X Bionics tights are brilliant to run in. Also needed is sort of a cold weather kit. So I'll be carrying a, a Say Sky long sleeved Merino 150 base layer. In the past, I have struggled with Merino being a little bit itchy on my skin and it's never felt that comfortable, but the Say Sky Merino is super soft and it's brilliant at sort of wicking moisture away and works really well as a base layer under a waterproof jacket. I've also got one of their 
165 Merino beanies. Again, same fabric, super soft, greater wicking moisture, uh, a lightweight pair of Say Sky gloves, and we've got to carry a waterproof pair as well. So I've got this uh, not too bulky pair of waterproof gloves from Deck Shell. For safety reasons, I'll be carrying one of Harrier's little emergency bivy bags, super compact, really lightweight. I'm pretty sure the UTMB mandatory kit says all you need is a foil blanket. I personally don't think that's good enough for a mountain race, so I am going to be carrying a bivy bag, that's for sure. Coming to any difficulties, I can climb inside and it's really going to protect me from the elements. Uh, a little compact first aid kit full of all those essentials and a whistle, but a slightly different whistle. So I've got one of Nightcore's uh, electric whistles. It's actually called the uh, NWE30 and I reviewed this on the channel and was really impressed with its performance. So a little battery operated whistle, twist it if needed, hopefully I won't need it but you twist it and it will set off a 120 decibel whistle but it'll also give off a 2000 lumen strobe light so I would much rather rely on this uh, if my life is in danger than that sort of cheap plastic whistle on my race vest. The next item of kit on the list is super important when we take on any mountainous race and I soon realized this when I took on the challenge in Transvolcania without them and that is running poles. Uh, over the last sort of five six years i've been relying on a pair of salomon carbon mountain poles uh, they've done a good job they've served me well but the other day i tested out uh, harrier's new uh, carbon fixed length z poles and was super impressed with them out here in chamonix uh, they're actually a bit lighter than my salomons the handle grips are a bit more comfortable and the wrist straps are softer but i also like the fact that they're uh, more compact when you sort of pack them down so the poles actually clip into the little baskets on the end so it keeps it all nice and tidy and like i said it's a bit easier to pack them down and to stow them on my race vest so i'm going to be using any, these in the race and i would say if you're in the market for a new pair of running poles or your first pair of running poles i would definitely check these out on the harrier website i think they're going to be available to pre-order very soon um, but the best bit of all is they retail for only 89 pounds and that's pretty much half price of all the other carbon running poles i've ever used and really really good value but also so great quality. Another very important item of kit because we're going to be running through two nights in the TDS is obviously our head torch. Uh, my main light of choice is going to be Phoenix's HM65RT. Ever since I reviewed this light on the channel, I was blown away by its performance and it's kind of become my go-to running head torch. Uh, super bright on full power at 1400 lumens. Uh, it's going to light up any situation. Probably handy to have in some of the more technical sections at night, but most of the time I'll be running it on that mid setting of 400 lumens because then it gives me a super long battery life as well which is really important it's got a nice wide headband super breathable and we've got this kind of boa style system on it so really easy to adjust on the fly very very comfortable not too heavy good adjustment on that bezel and really simple to use even when you're tired uh, we need to carry a backup light as well and i personally think a great backup light is phoenix's hl uh, 18rt it's part of their sort of running range so it has the same headband as the previous torch with that same boa system uh, it's a bit lighter more compact and obviously not as bright but it still packs a really good punch for a small unit so it's perfect for a sort of backup light so that's going to be going along in my dry bag with a spare pair of batteries just in case other little bits that we're going to be carrying is a little collapsible bowl super handy in races uh, overseas where they've got hot food at the aid station so the A stations at UTMB races full of sort of hot uh, noodly salty soup which is super tasty the bowl's perfect for that or a cup of tea cup of coffee something like that uh, once you're finished folds nice and flat super simple and it doesn't take up too much room in your race vest uh, i've got the bandage that we mentioned in our chamonix tour at utmb week the other day uh, if you haven't seen that video it's well worth going checking out especially if you're coming over for the race lots of handy information so you have to carry this elasticated sticky bandage it's got to be 100 centimeters in length and at least six centimeters in width so we're going to have that in our uh, dry bag uh, salt tablets just to give us some electrolytes through the way it could be a warm race it's looking like that the weather so we'll have uh, some salt tablets not the whole tub i'll put some in a bag obviously and we'll have one of our 
believe and achieve run for adventure multi wraps because on a race like TDS, you definitely have to believe to achieve. Nutrition wise for the race, I'm gonna be relying on Morton products for the majority of it. Uh, I think they make brilliant nutritional products. They work really well for me. They keep my energy levels high and consistent. So I'm not sort of peaking and troughing along the way and they sit really well with my stomach. So I'm gonna be using their 160 drink mix, uh, pouring this into one of my Salomon soft flasks, 500 ml of water, and I'll be doing that uh, every time I get to fill my bottles up. I'll be re replacing that in the bottle. Packed full of energy, and it's got 40 grams of carbohydrates in one sachet, so a really good hit of carbs. Uh, I'm actually gonna have um, three soft flasks with me. So I'll have one with my Morton in, I'll have one maybe with electrolyte, and I'll have one with just clear water. I think it's really important for races like this in the mountains that you carry maybe a spare bottle because it might seem like the checkpoints are quite close together, you know, six, seven, eight miles apart, but you're in the mountains. So you're moving slowly and it can take hours and hours to get to them. And like I said, it's looking like it could be a warm race. So I think one and a half liters is a much safer option. I'll also be taking Morton gels with me, so I'll have a mixture of the caffeinated and non-caffeinated gels. If I'm honest, I tend to steer clear of sort of caffeine in nutritional products on long races, but um, I will take a couple just in case. And I'll be carrying five or six of their solid bars, and I'll probably have um, some of the gels, some of the drink mix, and some of the solid bars in my drop bag so I can restock sort of mid-race. But these have been working really well out in the mountains through training. Uh, uh, super tasty again high calorie rate 225 calories per serving but they're just really nice to eat easy to digest and it feels like you get a really good hit of energy so just a little treat as i'm going along i might have a, a mouthful now and again something to look forward to on top of all of that we've obviously got the aid station so really well stocked aid stations at all the utmb races so lots and lots of choice you've got uh, ham cheese bread biscuits you know we are in france at the end of the day but they've also got some hot food options so that salty sort of noodle soup they do is brilliant it works really well for me very very tasty and obviously it gives you lots of salt which is super important they've also got things like pasta dishes uh, and chili so you've got lots of choice at the aid stations along the way to carry all of this kit i have a three liter dry bag so i'm going to stuff in all that mandatory kit that hopefully i'm not going to need get it in there nice and tight cinch it down seal it up and then that will be going in the main compartment of my salomon advanced skin 12 set been a massive fan of this pack over the years i've had several versions of it and it's kind of become my go-to race vest this is the latest version so we've got that handy new stuff pocket on the top for your waterproof jacket really easy to get it out when you need it and i can now mount my running poles on that front bungee system where i like to have them it's a super comfy pack to run in i've never had any issues with it all that accessible storage for all your goodies on the move is brilliant and it's never let me down the weather has brightened up so we brought the studio outside into the campsite it was a little bit crowded in the van there so wrapping up the kit i'm going to be using at this year's tds at utmb is the all important trail shoe choice now this is probably going to come as no surprise to a lot of the viewers and it's probably not the best kept secret in the world but i bought out several pairs of different shoes to give them their final test here in sort of race conditions in the mountains around chamonix so the first pair is the Salomon Pulsar Trail Pro. Really enjoyed how the midsole felt cushioning the rocker and how the plate performed, but it's gonna be the first shoe to go because I don't find the upper overly comfortable. The lace eyelets dig into the top of my foot a bit and I do find it quite hard to get a good lockdown around my midfoot. So unfortunately, that is gone from the equation. Next up comes from Nike. And if you follow the channel for any period of time, you'll know I've got a, a, a bit of a dodgy history with Nike trail shoes and they tend not to work out that well for me. I've actually really enjoyed the Zoom Exagamma since I've been out here in the mountains. The fit of the shoe works great for my midfoot, really well locked down, good space in the toe, and it's just felt super comfortable to run in. I've actually done a couple of uh, good long runs out there in the mountains and the only issue I have had is as I put more miles into that midsole it's got a little bit softer and I think the shoe's lost a bit of underfoot stability so when I've been out there on some sort of technical sections there has been several times where I've nearly sort of tweaked or rolled my ankle and that's definitely not what we want when we're out there on the course of the TDS and it is pretty technical running uh, out there on the route so unfortunately 
the Nike Zoom Exagamma isn't gonna make the cut. I've just actually reviewed the Endorphin Edge on the channel, and I'd say if you're thinking about purchasing a pair of these trail shoes, it's definitely worth a watch. Now, I've really enjoyed the performance of the carbon plate in this midsole, and without a doubt, it is the best carbon plated trail running shoe I've run in when it comes to adaptability. So it doesn't feel too stiff or too rigid at the midfoot when I'm moving at speed on technical areas. And um, I've really enjoyed the shoe when I've been running at home as well. On the flatter stuff, the less technical trails performs really well. Uh, the only downside I've had is obviously the trails out here are pretty technical. And there's been a couple of times on longer runs when I've been getting fatigued towards the end of that run, putting more weight through the heel that the shoe hasn't felt as stable as some of the others. And there's been a few sketchy moments. So unfortunately, I don't think the uh, endorphin edge is gonna cut it on that technical route of TDS. So unfortunately, it's another one that's gonna have to go. So finally, we are down to two pairs of trail running shoes. So we have Hoka's Speedgoat 5s and we've got Sokini's Exodus Ultra. Both really good performing trail shoes for me. They perform well on the trails uh, down in Cornwall, but also out here in the mountains of Chamonix. I've got really fond memories of the Hoka Speedgoat. I actually wore a pair um, when I completed UTMB in 2018, a pair of the threes. I didn't take them off my feet for the whole 104 miles and they ran and performed brilliantly on all the terrain. And then we've got the excellent Exodus Ultra. Um, I took them first out of the box, first run in Dual 24 and ran 80 miles in them had no issues whatsoever so no hot spots no blisters no rubbing nothing like that and I've actually put a good 200 miles into the shoe now on a big mix of terrain and it still hasn't let me down so uh, drum roll we need to pick uh, one of the two shoes and yep it is gonna be the hut no it's not gonna be the hokers it's gonna be the Exodus Ultra for sure this is the perfect shoe for me. Fits my foot shape so well, offers great level of comfort and protection, really good grip from that power track outsole, and I just can't fault it. So I think it's gonna be the perfect shoe for the TDS for me, and I'm pretty sure most of you knew that already. So there it is, that is the kit that I'm gonna be using, taking on the 90 miles and the 9,100 meters of elevation of the TDS. I feel that it's all been thoroughly tested, and I also feel I can really rely on it when it comes to helping me get back to that iconic finish line in Chamonix. Just want to take this opportunity to say a massive thanks to everyone for all the support, all the encouragement that you've given me over the last couple of months as we've been building towards this goal race. Uh, I really do feel there's, there's been a few ups and downs along the way, but your great support has definitely helped to keep me motivated. And after this great training block out here in the mountains, I feel like I'm ready and feeling pretty confident about taking on that challenging mountainous route come Monday. Really hope you've enjoyed following this short series, following my preparation. And now there's just one more thing to do to call a wrap on the series, and that is to get it done on race day and make it round nice and safely. But for now, I'm just gonna go off and give my kit one last check, make sure I've got everything, and then I've got to head off, collect my race bib and my wristband, and then it is go time. So thanks for watching, guys. It's really appreciated. We will be back on the channel very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. A bit. Up a bit, left a bit, right a bit. Oh, now you're good. Are you <laughs> me? Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm trying to film and he's eating a baguette out of a rustly paper bag. You can't get the staff, I'm telling you. I don't know.